Every day, our body performs several functions like respiration, digestion, excretion, circulation, and lots more. As our bodies comprises of various complex organs, each one of them requires energy to function. From where do an organism acquire energy? Of course, from food. In these processes, digestion plays the most vital role that provides energy to the body by converting the complex molecules into the smaller and absorbable ones. The digestion process begins with the movement when we put food into mouth, which carry out the mechanical digestion via buccal organs, including teeth, which masticate, via tongue, which makes up the saliva for the enzymatic degradation. Further, moving to the salivary section. Saliva is rich in electrolytes, including sodium, potassium, bicarbonate ion, chloride ions, etc. In addition to it, it also possesses various enzymes, including amylase, lysoenzymes, and so on. Amylase is here responsible for the metabolism of various carbohydrates, starch, and also maltose, which further converts them to glucose so that we can easily absorb them. Further, if we talk about the uses of lysoenzymes, so that plays an important role in seeming the antibacterial properties. Further talking about the various steps involved in the digestion process are ingestion, mechanical digestion, chemical digestion, absorption, and defecation. Defecation here in turns represents the removal of undigested waste from the body. The various body compartments comprises of various pH ranges. I mean, I'm talking about the various acidity and basicity ranges where the body compartments works. Further moving to the various parts of GIT, so the human digestive system comprises of two major kinds of organs. The first one is the primary, which includes mouth, pharynx, oesophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. Moving towards the accessory digestive organs, they are one which assist the primary organs. I mean, they are not the major ones, but without them, their digestion can never be imagined. They include teeth, tongue, salivary glands, exocrine glands, liver, and lots more. So, alimentary canal is a long coiled tube having muscular walls and glandular epithelium extending from mouth to anus. There are various nerves involved in GIT. The location and function, like first of all, the first nerve is the orbax plexus and other is the mesonous plexus. The orbax plexus is one which regulates the movement through GIT and the mesonous plexus is one which is responsible for secretory function in GIT. Moving towards the various parts in the digestive system, they include mouth, which is the major organ called the buccopharyngeal cavity. It possesses teeth, tongue, and various salivary glands in turn. The major function of teeth is tearing, cutting, crushing, and provide the mechanical digestion. Further, moving towards the salivary gland, Going towards the salivary glands, the salivary glands in mammals are the exocrine ones. I mean, they require the ducts to expel out the secretion. Here, there lies the parotid gland, submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland. Here are the respective positions, the parotid gland, the parotid duct, which pours out the secretion to the floor of tongue. So the major function or the enzymes which helps the saliva to convert starch into maltose, maltose into glucose and various triglycerides to diacylglycerol by which it assists the easier absorption of fats, starch and maltose with the easier function. Moving further, here are the classification of various salivary glands in the tabular form. So parotid glands, submandibular glands, sublingual glands and the minor salivary glands. We'll talk about them later. Further, moving towards the function of saliva, here, when the food is masticated, the salivary amylase keeps on functioning and provides a mechanical digestion, including the chemical one. Here, the salivary amylase works over the carbohydrate starch containing compounds, which also helps in chewing and swallowing and also lubricating effect. It provides the solvent effect by dissolving various foods inside 
the buccal cavity. Now let's talk about various disorders associated with the salivary glands. Hypersalivation, which means the reduction in the secretion of saliva. Hypersalivation, of course, the excess secretion of saliva. Xerostomia represents the dry mouth condition. Drawling means the uncontrolled flow of saliva outside the mouth. Moving towards the mums, mums means the swallowed parotid gland. Look at the image. This is the image representing the mums, which is due to the viral infection of paromyxovirus. Other is the Once the bolus passes through the pharynx, it reaches the oesophagus, the tubular organ which transports the food to the stomach via peristalsis movement. Peristalsis is nothing but the contraction and relaxation of the pie, which shows a specific movement through which the food is transferred into the stomach, pushes downwards. Further, representing here, it possesses the upper esophageal sphincter, which represents the junction between the pharynx and the oesophagus, which prevents the entry of air. Another, here you're gonna observe the lower esophageal sphincter, which prevents the reflux of gastric content back towards the esophagus. So it is what? An esophagus is a narrow muscular tubular structure which connects pharynx with the stomach. Moving next, the major, major organ. The major organ, you know, is stomach. The J-shaped organ placed obliquely behind the diaphragm. It's differentiated into three major sections called cardia, fundus, and the pyrolic section. Look, this is the fundus region, the body, pyrolus, and this is this is this J-shaped organ is known as this is called cardiac sphincter. And here one lies the pyrolic sphincter. Right? So what are the major function of stomach? The major function is the storage of the digestion food, digested food, the hemopoietic function, the protective function, and the function of HCL here is to activate the pepsinogen into pepsin. And the various bacteriolytic action are also seen due to the strong acidic conditions. Now, the food is here in stomach, which is the major organ, right? So the major organ of stomach is the secretion of HCL, pepsinogen, the secreted, which is secreted via the major cells known as sheep cells, right? Next, let's talk about the most secretory cells which lies in the glandular epithelium or the mucosa of gastric. So let's talk about the three major cells. First one are the chief cells, chief cells which secrete the pepsinogen which is responsible for the digestion of proteins. Renin, which, is helps, which helps in the digestion of milk. Lipase for lipid, gelatinase, urease and lots more. Other are the parietal cells, which are responsible for the major acidity. I mean the acidic HCL. Other are the absorption and the intrinsic factor, which are responsible for absorption of vitamin B12, which represents the hemopoietic action. Further, they represent or they secrete the mucin, who are the cells which, which uh, secrete the mucus? So they are the mucus neck cells. Mucus neck cells here represent, uh, secrete the mucus, which in turn helps in providing the prevention from erosion of the of this hydrochloric acid. Other are G cells, which secrete gastrin. The anterochromaffin cells serve for serotonin. Anterochromaffin like cells for histamines. Further, the gastric disorders. What are the gastric disorders, you know? Gastritis, gastric atrophy, peptic ulcer, Jolin and Lanson syndrome, and lots more. So, another major organ, the U-shaped organ, is the pancreas. During the process of churning, you know what happens? The highly concentrated HCL converts the pepsin, pepsinogen to pepsin, which later on acts or on the digestion of proteins, right? So, here in the next part, we are going to discuss about pancreas. Major function of pancreas is the digestion of carbohydrate by the major amylolytic enzymes, digestion of lipids by lipolytic enzymes, and digestion of proteins via proteolytic enzymes. Now, the chyme passes out to the pyrolic sphincter and enters to the duodenum region. Here, which causes the mixing of bile into the chyme with the help of hepatopancreatic secretion by a common bile duct it helps in the further breakdown of molecules bile is what bile is a 
kind of greenish yellow liquid which possesses lots of bile salts bile pigments called bilirubin and bilirubin uh, comprises of cholesterol phospholipids and lots more so what's the area where the bile is absorbed the bile is stored in the pear shaped organ or a sac like structure known as gallbladder so gall what's the major function of gallbladder gallbladder stores bile and the bile produced in the liver makes media alkaline in nature right alkaline here after passing through the acidic environment of the stomach the food reaches to gallbladder which helps in the emulsification of fat excreting function of bacteria cholesterol lecithin etc represents the laxative action as well the antiseptic action as well so this was about gallbladder now moving next is the major absorptive part what do you know what's the major important organ so here is the small intestine it is divided into two major section three major sections the middle duodenum duodenum is the widest organ and distal ileum which is the thinner which is thinner and quite less vascular so the food here is known as chyle now let's talk moving next is the mal malabsorption which is uh, caused due to the difficulty in absorption of nutrients in small intestine further that is further the celiac disease it is an autoimmune disorder so this is what it possesses lots of microvilli through which the food absorbed is being digested is being absorbed here right so this was something about small intestine so the simpler molecules are not absorbed directly they are absorbed with the help of microvillous structures through the jejunum duodenum jejunum and ileum further moving next we'll talk about what happens to the undigested material the undigested material called feces in the form of feces are transported by the large intestine where water is reabsorbed and the waste is temporarily stored in rectum and further moved out with the help of an organ known as anus so this is how this large intestine looks like this is the cecum ascending colon the transverse colon descending colon or the sigmoid colon and other is the rectum called rectal or sigmoid junction and the lowest organ is the anus through which the feces moves out moving next let's talk about certain disorders associated with large intestine so they may be constipation which occurs due to the hardening of stools other the appendicitis called caused due to the swollen or inflamed appendix ulcerative colitis is the inflammation in the colon region in the walls of large intestine so this was something about digestion so before we end let's talk about the how the chemical uh, reaction takes place inside your body inside or during absorption so there are major enzymes known as uh, which are present in the pancreatic juices like so they are the trypsinogen they may be chymotrypsin the procarboxypeptidases amylase lipases etc right so when the food or chyle is mixed with the bile juice and other pancreatic juices they convert the chyle to chyle right next so what happens here the protein or peptones the proteases are converted to dipeptide proteins right so how the proteins are converted to dipeptides so this process or this conversion carries out during the process or in the presence of an enzyme known as trypsin which is activated due to the presence of what due to the presence of Uh, an enzyme known as enterokinase in large intestine in small intestine sorry so further moving next nucleoside what happens to the nucleus enzyme nucleus enzyme works by acting or converting the nucleic acid to nucleotide and nucleosides further lipase is converted or the fats are converted to diacyl or uh, monoglycerols to fatty acids to small fats right sucrose is being converted to uh, glucose and fructose in presence of enzyme known as sucrase maltose is being converted to glucose and uh, galactose so dipeptides various dipeptides are being converted to the smallest section known as uh, amino acid for absorption so this was something a general uh, introduction and physiology about digestion how it works how it happens so thanks for watching thank you so much keep watching our videos and don't forget to subscribe like and giving your precious feedback which is which helps us a lot motivate us to create such videos thank you so much